Howdy folks, you're watching Deuce and Guns, and today we're talking about this blue ammo again. Because this blue ammo is stupid fast. Okay, first of all, with a baseline, again with the Monarch, the steel case Monarch, which this thing loved, by the way. I don't understand. I believe I have all my cameras ready to go. <laughs> this thing shoots so well. Oh. 2,575 feet per second. Now, the blue ammo. Okay, oh, that's a heavy beast. <laughs> 4,496 feet per second. It's so odd because it's very loud. It is, it is actually louder than the normal 308 and 762 by 51 cartridge, but there's zero recoil. My Ruger 1022 has more recoil than this thing. <laughs> 4533, nice. Boy, it's a hot day in Tennessee today. About 92, 93 with a uh, pretty high humidity as well, which is why I got my bandana out. Of course, UT orange, you wet down a bandana, you wrap around a little bit, you put it around your neck. And not only does that show your affiliation with your gang members, but it also protects your neck from the sun and it keeps the blood flow going through your neck nice and cool. So then you think straight and it cools down your entire body. You cool off your neck, your entire body is cool as well. That was free of charge. And the firearm we are shooting today is not the CU-308. It is an old Spanish Mauser chambered in 762 by 51. Let's go ahead and load the sucker up. Now I'm curious to find out if the extraction claw that Mausers are famous for, that huge large extraction claw, is going to be capable to pull these cases out because you know that was an issue. She loads up. Good deal. Let's get shooting. Okay, all cameras are ready. Everything's rolling. Here we go. Dr. Well Soda. Let's find out what 450 foot pounds of plastic energy does to you. Oh, 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 holy Jesus. That took, that took out everything. I was expecting to take out one at a time. Nope. Let's see if it extracts. Hey, it did. Sweet. I don't have anything to shoot at anymore. <laughs> All righty, Dr. Well Soda, you're on call. With a speed of 4,500 feet per second and a projectile of about 10 grains, you're looking at 450 foot-pounds of energy. Now, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, well, what does 450 foot-pounds equate to a modern cartridge? Because this is, well, this is a modern cartridge, but it is not something you're gonna see every day, especially out of a Spanish Mauser from, I think this is a 19, 1916. So 450 foot-pounds is equal to a 357 Magnum revolver out of a three inch barrel. All right, Dr. Wow, let us know how she feels. <laughs> Looks like one survived. Looks like one survived. No, no, I was wrong. Two survived. Here's the, uh, well, one was wounded in battle. Now I took one of these apart because I wanted to see how heavy the bullet was and I wanted to see a look at the powder too because it has a I'm assuming it's a very fast burning powder but I took it apart and what's weird is that it is all kind of encapsulated as one piece of plastic the bullet is melted onto the case so you have to pry it off with a set of pliers it doesn't there we go it's the it, it hangs on there because it is it is actually forged as part of the case and I'm assuming, I don't know how they get the powder in there, if they put the powder in first and then forge it on there. I have no idea. Or there's some sort of like uh, sonically weld it maybe on there. I don't know, but it is completely connected. It's not a pressure fit like a normal bullet is. And now let's take a look at the powder. The powder is a very fine grain. It's still a rifle type powder, but it is a fine grain extrusion powder, kind of a stick powder that's very fine grain. I've now removed the bolt out of the C308. Usually that bolt sits right there and cycles back and forth. Right there, there's the bolt face right there. And I was having trouble. Here's a normal, that's a normal brass. 
but I was having trouble with the extraction with the plastic, the plastic cases. And the reason is, is because the head, the bolt head or the case head is smaller on the plastic rounds. There's a reason for that because Germany wanted these things to actually cycle in this firearm. Well, you can't do that with something that imparts, you know, much, much less energy and has, you know, very fast speed, but very light bullet. It's not going to impart enough energy on this bolt to cycle the action. It doesn't even move the action at all. So in order to make the plastic round cycle in a semi-automatic fashion, what they did was, and I think they also used them full, action, full auto as well, but what they did was they made a whole nother bolt assembly that was, I think, out of aluminum or magnesium. It was super lightweight. They made a super lightweight version and it did not have the locking rollers because this is not a gas operated system. Many people think these are gas operated. They are not. It is a roller lock delayed action. And in this case, with the, with the plastic training ammo, it was just a simple blowback like a, well, like a high point. It was just a simple blowback action or a 22, just like a 22 rifle. So the action of firing the 10 grain bullet at 4,500 feet per second was enough just to push the whole thing back against the spring pressure. The only thing holding this thing forward was the spring pressure. But the reason why they used a smaller case head was because they used a smaller bolt head. The bolt face was smaller. So then if you accidentally left in the ultra lightweight blowback only version of the bolt, you would not be able to chamber an actual true full power 308 case. It wouldn't go in. That's a safety concern because if you try to fire this without the bolt being able to lock back, it would be, it would be catastrophic to the, especially the rifle. The rifle would be catastrophic to the rifle and possibly injure the shooter or someone nearby the shooter. So they definitely took a, a lot of, a lot of points to make sure that this would not be a danger to anybody else in a training scenario. Now what's really cool is every now and again you can find the ultra lightweight assemblies which will work in these in these plastic training rounds. Well guys curiosity has the best of me here because I have this case unfired case of plastic ammo that I pulled the bullet out of so it's useless but I've got this powder in there. And see now the powder I've got how many grains is that 12, uh, 12 and a quarter grains of powder in that which is not a small charge for, for something this lightweight, that's that's a pretty hefty charge. So I'm gonna burn that and see what that looks like. And of course, I'm gonna bring you guys along to for the uh, for the show. Here we go. See what this looks like here. That's not that big of a big of a burn, really. I expect it to burn much much faster. Okay, now in comparison, I've got some Reloader 15 that is pulled out, and it'll it's gonna be about the same. That'll be about the same burn rate. It seems like. Oh, it is slower. Huh. It is slower. So that was a much faster, faster burn rate. <laughs> I learned something new. I learn something new every day, don't we? Well, guys, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go up subscribe. A lot more is on the way. And if you look in the description below the video, you will see a link to an Amazon storefront. That is a Deuce and Guns Amazon storefront. And I have links on there to all the things that I use on a daily basis. Leatherman's, uh, some of the camera stuff I use the, you know, some of the optics I use, all that stuff that I recommend, that I highly recommend that I reviewed on the channel and some things I just use on a daily basis. Those are things I highly recommend. And if you buy something from Amazon through that link, Deuce and Guns gets a little piece of that, just a very tiny piece of that. And it costs you nothing extra at all. So if you're gonna buy something from Amazon anyway, go through those links there and you will be supporting my channel and keep the lights on and keep me on this bizarre ammo so I can test it out for you guys for future videos. And again, if you guys have any questions, comments, or video ideas, leave that in the comment box below the video. And of course, you guys have a great day. See ya.